Are you ready to witness the epic battle between hardware wallets? On one side we got the Cold Card Mark III, on the other side we got the Cobo Vault Pro, and they're going head to head. We're going to see which one of these two bad boys is the best hardware wallet in the market today. Hi, my name's Chuck, and I bring you exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else in Bitcoin. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. All right, let's get into the fort. In this comparison, we're going to assume that the Cobo Vault Pro has the Bitcoin only firmware version 1.5.1 as the time of this video. That's because the cold card here only supports Bitcoin. And um, if you're looking to store multiple different types of cryptocurrencies, then you're probably going to want to go with the Cobo Vault Pro. Now, briefly, I want to share what these two have in common that separate them from other hardware wallets. They're both open source meaning that the code is available for everyone to see on GitHub. Another cool option is that they're both air-gapped, meaning that basically these devices never have to connect to the internet at all. So you can sign transactions and everything completely offline. That's a huge feature. Uh, unlike this Trezor here, this always has to be plugged into the computer. What? Oh my God, someone stole my Bitcoin! I'm just kidding guys. Nobody stole my Bitcoin on my Trezor, but I was just illustrating the point that basically this has to be connected to a computer and the internet in order to sign and broadcast transactions. Whereas both of these devices, you can sign transactions completely offline, which is great for security. Another cool feature I like about both of these is they support awesome open source third party wallets such as Electrum, Wasabi Wallet, Blue Wallet and others. Finally, I like both of these devices, but you guys came here for the fight. So we're gonna focus on the differences and find out which one's better. So let's do it. Round one. When you first receive the hardware wallet that you ordered, you wanna be ensured that from the time it got manufactured to the time it arrives at your door, that nobody tampered with it in between or installed some sort of malware in order to steal your funds. So how do these two wallets do it? Well. Uh, the Kobo Vault Pro, just like most ha other hardware wallets, has tamper-proof packaging. And another cool feature that they have is a self-destruct mechanism. And so basically, if anybody tried to open this up, it would wipe all the data on it, making it secure. Another cool feature that they encourage you to do, but don't force you to do, is web authentication. And in this authentication, it uses private and public key encryption, kind of like Bitcoin. However, you do have to connect to their server to do it. They could log your IP address, the date and the time. Plus, you never know if anybody's eavesdropping on your connection with them. It is not completely private. However, with the cold card, it also comes in tamper-proof packaging. But on that packaging is a serial code. And when you first turn the cold card on, it will display the serial code. And you can visually verify that those codes match. When you power it on, the data and the integrity of the firmware is all checked and there will be a red light and a green light and if the red light stays on it means that something is wrong inside the cold card and that you shouldn't use it however if the green light turns on then everything is good and everything checks out another cool feature is the clear case so you can see and visually verify if someone tampered with the device or installed something weird on it and finally, most of the critical components are encased in hard epoxy, which would be extremely difficult uh, for someone to try and tamper with something and likely they would break the whole thing and likely uh, you would also see it. I do like the Cobo Vault Pro, how they used encryption and a self-destruct mechanism. However, I wish there was a way that you could authenticate everything offline. I love how you can verify the supply chain protection completely offline with the cold card. So the winner of this round goes to the cold card. Round two. So let's talk a little bit about appearances. The Cobo Vault Pro has a very modern, sleek design. It's got a beautiful four inch touchscreen, whereas the cold card kind of looks like a simple calculator. Now this could be good as if a common thief came in, they would likely steal the Cobo Vault Pro versus the cold card. However, in either case, I doubt they would even be able to know what to do with these devices. Um, I do think appearances matter because a lot of people like to use technology that fits right in with other technology that they're used to using. So this round is actually going to the Cobo Vault. Round three. 
All right, so now we're gonna talk about air gap security. What's nice about the Kobo Vault is it comes with detachable batteries. And this is important because if you are traveling or something or you put it in a bank vault, you could easily separate the batteries from the device, meaning that anybody with physical access to this device wouldn't easily be able to power it on. Now, another thing I like about the Kobo Vault's lithium battery is that the location of the charging port is in such a way that if you connect it to your computer and try to connect it to your cold card, it won't allow you to do that, making it fully air gapped. Finally, the Kobo Vault Pro scans QR codes with its camera in order to sign transactions. This means there's no actual physical uh, hardware going in between the computer and the Kobo Vault. The cold card is powered by a micro USB cable and those cables are pretty much everywhere, so anybody with access to this device would easily be able to power it on. Also, if someone got a hold of it, let's say your kids or something, and they could plug it into the computer connected to the internet, making it no longer air gapped. Finally, it does use the micro SD card to sign transactions between your computer and your cold card. So uh, there is a potential security threat there that a hacker could install some sort of malware that could affect the cold card. Um, so in those regards, I believe the Kobo Vault Pro does have better air gap security. So the winner of this round goes to the Kobo Vault. Round four. <laughs> If you guys want to learn about what the Evil Maid attack is, I made a cool animation uh, in my cold card video. Links in the description below. Check it out if you don't know what the Evil Maid attack is. But how do these devices protect you from the Evil Maid attack? Well, the Koba Vault Pro does have a fingerprint sensor, and it would be kind of hard to replicate someone's fingerprint, but definitely not impossible. The cold card, on the other hand, has you set two pin codes, a pin code prefix and a pin code suffix. And when you enter in your pin code prefix, it'll show you two words that are specific to your device and specific to your pin. So if someone tried to switch it out, there, there would be no way for them to know what those two words are. When you enter in your pin code prefix and you see your two words, you know it's safe to enter in your pin code suffix and access the device. So the winner of the Evil Made Attack protection goes to the cold card. Round five. So that covers security while the device is not in your possession, but what if it is in your possession? Say you're at home and an attacker comes in and holds you or your family hostage. What are you gonna do? Well, with the Kobo Vault Pro, it does allow you to create passphrase wallets. Essentially, those are wallets hidden under a passphrase and you could load small amounts of Bitcoin into a couple of different passphrase wallets and then that way you could give that to the attacker and hope that they're happy with it and that they leave you alone. Now you could have multiple passphrase wallets so if things escalate you could give them the next one and the next one but keeping your funds under a main passphrase wallet that you never give them. That's pretty much the only duress feature that the Kobo Vault Pro has. However the cold card comes with quite a few. It also lets you create passphrase wallets. It also lets you set a custom login countdown. And basically what that does is every time you log in with your pin, it forces you to wait a certain amount of time that you set between five minutes all the way to 28 days. The device has to be plugged in during that entire duration. Otherwise the process has to restart. This could be helpful in a duress situation because obviously attacker is not going to wait around. Another couple options it provides is a duress pin and that's essentially a separate pin that you set and it's basically the same thing as a passphrase wallet. It'll load up a completely different wallet. You could load that wallet with some Bitcoin and hope that satisfies any attackers. And finally it allows you to set a brick me pin and what that does you enter in that pin and the device self-destructs. Doesn't blow up, but it essentially turns it into a brick. So no attacker or nobody will even be able to get anything from this device. It'll be as useless as a paperweight. So that's how the these devices protect you. Obviously the cold card wins this round. Round six. So which one of these two devices is easier to use? Well, we're going to start out with the Kobo Vault and it's really nice because it's super easy to get where you want to go within a couple of clicks. Uh, very easy to get navigate. And when, you, when you're ready to sign transactions, you do it through scanning a QR code. And that makes it super fast. 
super simple. Also the Kobo Vault, you can use it with your mobile phone. So you can sign your transaction with your mobile phone. You don't need a laptop, you don't need a computer with a SD card adapter, which makes it um, very easy to use. Now the cold card on the other hand, um, while it is easy to navigate the interface, it, there is a small delay and every time you want to scroll, you got to hit a button or you have to hold the button and wait. Um, so it does take a little bit longer to get around. Also, you do have to use a micro SD card, which means you're going to need a laptop or a computer um, to use it with the appropriate adapter. Also, micro SD cards are very small and they can be lost pretty easily. In my opinion, ease of use goes to the Kobo Vault Pro. Round seven. All right, guys, so both of these hardware wallets have upgradable firmware. So they're both releasing new features all the time. Make sure to check out the website to make sure that you have the latest ones. But as of the time of this video, the cold card can pretty much do everything that the Kobo Vault can do. Plus it also lets you securely create paper wallets. You can create up to 10,000 child seeds using BIP85. Uh, you can back up your wallet using a micro SD card and it also has CK Bunker and HSM mode. So in regards of advanced features at the time of this video, the cold card wins this round. Final round. All right guys, so based on that information, we're gonna figure out who won the fight. But first I want you to go to the comment section below and let me know which one you liked better and why. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, in my mind, since I'm super technical, I'm kind of a nerd, I'm gonna go with the cold card. I really love the features on it and the security that it provides. However, if you're a less technical person or want a more mobile hardware wallet, I would go with the Kobo Vault Pro and that would be the winner in my book. It is very sleek, very easy to use, a very good wallet. Actually, honestly guys, both of these are great hardware wallets and I'm probably gonna be using both of them. You can't go wrong with either one. So it's up to you. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me till the end. If you guys love this content, please give your respect. Smash that like button. Subscribe for more, and we'll see you again next time. Have a good day. Thank you. Daddy.